Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Arnold Wangila. Uh, I'll be the moderator today for this session. I'm the accountant for the Kenya Bankers Association. I hope I'm audible enough. Maybe Rosalind, you can confirm my, my, my voice. Yes, you're very audible. Yeah, so um, just uh, first of all, we'll start with the housekeeping rules. Uh, for all the attendees, you are muted and therefore you will not be able to speak. We encourage you to post uh, your questions in the chat box during the presentation and we'll attend to them at the end of uh, uh, the, the presentation. Uh, when you're posting your question, you can give a brief um, description of your business so that we have a better understanding when you're tackling the, uh, the questions. Then also, um, the presentation slides will be shared uh, at the end of the session. Uh, so we encourage your participants to be keen during the presentation and not necessarily concentrate on uh, maybe taking notes or um, our taking notes because the presentation slides will share them at the end of, of the session. So welcome all. Uh, without further ado, uh, we will start uh, the webinar. For those who are logging in for the first time, uh, this is an Inuka uh, program webinar. And an Inuka program is a KBA program that uh, aims to empower micro enterprises to formalize their businesses, uh, small enterprises to professionalize their management, and medium enterprises to optimize operations and increase economic productivity. And one way of in increasing economic productivity is to increase sales and hence uh, boost S uh, MSME profits. And therefore, that informs uh, today's topic, uh, which is uh, effective sales strategies to boost uh, profits as an MSME. Uh, allow me to introduce uh, our today's speaker. Our today's speaker is uh, Francis Waidaka. Francis is the founder and CEO um, and lead trainer at Digital for Africa with over 21 years experience in technology information and um, digital marketing. He's a strategist and an expert in e-commerce, sales, and digital advertising. He's passionate about uh, data analytics, ad performance, and marketing automation. He's also a mentor uh, to many marketers and small businesses and owners, and he's also an alumnus of the Inuka program. So Francis, uh, welcome, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Arnold. I'm very excited. Uh, for this session, I have invited uh, friends and family and my, some of my mentees, some of my students in different colleges to join this session. Um, I will start by sharing my screen so that all of us can see it. And um, Arnold, once you see my screen, just alert me so that I know you are able to see it. Yeah, we can see your uh, screen, Francis. Okay, so as Anul has said, my name is Francis Waidaka. I have been in the technology and digital media space for the last 21 years. My first 10 years, I did information technology as an IT manager. And then for the last 11 years, I have been supporting um, small businesses and even uh, big, big companies in Kenya, specifically on the area of building an online presence. So today, we'll be looking at <clears throat> what are some of the ideas as a small business owner, you can use to grow your business, to boost your business, and even to digitize your business so that you can scale. And I know we have small businesses um, at the micro level, you know, where you are one business owner uh, with only yourself as the CEO, uh, the accountant, the HR manager, you know, you're the one who normally goes to the bank to transact, you're the one who runs to look for clients, you're the ones who, if you have something to deliver, you're the one who does it. I know there is that level, but there are also other, um, we call them, so we have those micro businesses, but we also have um, small businesses where you have like five employees uh, under you, could be marketing, could be HR, it could be accounting or something like that. And then we also have medium-sized enterprises, people with maybe, uh, or businesses with 50 employees, uh, 100 employees, the banking sector has a different way of categorizing businesses, but that is not the subject of today. The subject of today is just for us to learn how can we grow our business using digital tools? Because look at it, 
Technology is an enabler of innovation. You are able to reach someone in Rwanda, in Burundi, while you are here in Nairobi. And I'll tell you a personal case study that I, I have experienced myself. There was a time, I think it was in 2015, when I got a call from uh, South Africa, someone who has been following me uh, on social media, and they said, uh, I would want you to provide a training to my customers. And they are all, all the way in South Africa. And I was able to provide that service. And without leave, leaving my, the comfort of my office or wherever I am. So that's the beauty about technology. You can reach anywhere in the world. We normally say technology has flattened the world like a pancake or like a table. So you can create value in uh, Ruaka or in Kamulu or in Westlands and offer it to someone in uh, California. For example, the other day I was in the Nation Digital Summit in Mombasa. We learned that there, are a lot of, there is a lot of shift in technology and innovation in Kenya where um, instead of going to California physically, looking for a visa to go and work there, there are young people in Kenya who are earning 250,000 per month working for a company in San Francisco. Uh, there are people who are teaching Chinese how to speak Kiswahili or English. They are based in Kenya. They are earning up to 650,000 per month. There are people also we learned from the Nation Digital Summit that ended a month ago in Mombasa. There are people who are earning software developers who are based in Nairobi. And this is very, um, very, very you know, inspiring. They are earning 1 million Kenya shillings, not per year, per month, providing services and yet they are in Nairobi. All they need, all you need nowadays is a laptop and the internet, and you can offer value anywhere. You can be a teacher like myself, you can be a consultant, and you can provide your services anywhere. And COVID has accelerated that type of uh, innovation. So I don't want to say a lot about myself, but um, I've already been introduced, so I'll skip that. But I have been able to work with small, micro, and medium-sized enterprises, but also big companies. Uh, which I don't want to really focus on at the moment. Today, the conversation is around small business owners uh, who are struggling because of COVID. Uh, there was a lot of disruption in the SME sector in Kenya. People are saying there are no cash flow. So I want to show you from my experience in the last two or three years, I've been able to work with three businesses. And these are not companies in South Africa. These are not companies in uh, San Francisco, in London. They are here in Kenya, here in Nairobi. They are owned by people like you and me, and they are doing well. And the question is, how have they been able to do it? So let's look at um, the case studies. One of them um, is called David Insurance. David Insurance is a small business owner. He just, they are, they are based here in Mamlaka Road in Nairobi. Um, they provide insurance services to companies and business owners. And I want to focus on what I have learned from them. Because as an entrepreneur, as a mentor, as a consultant, as a trainer, I normally listen. When a business has collapsed, I want to understand why did they collapse? What caused the, uh, the, 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 the operations to cease? If a business is growing, I want to know why are they growing? So I'm very keen to listen. I'm not always there to advise and come with my own uh, biases. I normally want to listen and learn from everyone. So this is a business owner, David Insurance. You can learn from them. And they have been uh, one of the most highly rewarded or the most decorated SME in Kenya, specifically uh, uh, insurance agency in Kenya. The owner of the business is called Ken Cairo. Um, and what have they gotten right? How come AIG, and Sanlam have been rewarding David Insurance year after year as one of the best performing insurance agency in Kenya. What are they doing right? Number one, in terms of strategy, they use the website as a primary source of information for all their products and services. And this is something that I wish I learned many years ago. And this is something I really want to encourage you if you are a small business owner. I have personally seen that if you are a small business owner and you are very quick to build a website, when everyone is saying, oh, should I build a website? Should I have a Facebook page? Should I, have create, should I create an Instagram account? Should I have a YouTube channel? Where should I start? The person or the business owner who starts upfront is very early to adopt technology 
they always have a competitive advantage. So for the wheat insurance, the specific things they have done, their website has detailed information about their products and services. They also write articles regularly. After every one week or every two weeks, they write an article to educate their customers about how their products work, which are the best products for which kind of problems or which kind of risks. So, and they have been very successful. And I talked to the CEO of David Insurance uh, just this week, actually yesterday, and he told me, and he shared with me together with my team, that the website is currently the biggest source of leads. When we talk about a lead, we are saying, someone giving you a mobile number, going to your website and filling a form and saying, I'm interested in your product. How much does this product cost? How much does this uh, service cost? So the website is the biggest source of lead generation for the wheat insurance. That's a big, that's a big um, win, it's a massive success where your business is generating leads, your business or your website is growing and your website is marketing your business even when you are sleeping, you know? And this is the time to consider a website not as a cost, but as an investment to your business. You are not wasting money when you invest in a website. Maybe you don't even have a budget for a big website. You can start by something simple called Google My Business. And I'll be showing you um, an example of a business that has benefited from Google My Business. But specifically for Dawit, the greatest source of business for the longest, it used to be referrals. They just were re relying on friends, family, and uh, the BNI ecosystem where the CEO is a member. But at some point, you exhaust your friends and family by telling them, buy my products, and now you have to grow your business. So what has Dawit done? They have a website, and I want to show you um, this practically. So let's look at um, how does because you may have a website, but does it have relevant information? This, this is a website for the weight insurance. And this is one of the products that they are very much um, keen on selling. So they talk about how do you incentivize employees so that they can stay longer? So this is an insurance policy you can take as a business owner. So look, the website has, uh, you can see the headline. Um, the main headline is, is there is the employee incentive. There is information here to give someone a big idea, what will I get? There is detailed information, and there is even a video here that can help you to understand more about um, the business. Employee benefits or employee incentives. When you think about it, sitting at your desk, um, either a CEO- I don't CEO have time organized... to play the entire video, but you can see there is a very good onboarding journey, onboarding process, and you can click here to tell me more, um, so you can see in terms of the structure of the website, there are headlines and subhead, uh, there are headlines and subheadings. There is some detailed copy about the products they are offering. There is a video here, another subheading here. Who is this product for? And there is information about it here. Then here they have visualized the kind of risks that they, and the solutions they offer. So you can see all the information because nowadays people don't consume information on a website like reading a composition the way we learned in high school. People glean through a page and see, oh, is there something important? So having things like the, the, the small headlines that you are seeing, the big ideas, when I see I'm interested in the big ideas, then I can look at the detail. And beyond that, they have gone all the way to the bottom and you can see their biggest selling point is uh, claims. But at the bottom, there is a form where if I'm interested in what they are doing, I can fill this form and I submit. And that form goes to a, a customer relationship management system, uh, or in short, a CRM, which I will be talking about. So that's an example. That is the first case study. Uh, and the, uh, as I have said, you can also see the mobile number and the email and the place where they are located. As I said, they are at Mamlaka Road, at Utumishi Cooperative Building, here in Nairobi. So that is very important for building trust for someone who did not know about them. And that's a, a successful story we can learn from the wheat. They are no longer relying on um, referrals. Yes, referrals are there. Happy customers will go and refer others and they come. But the website, they are now being able to attract the kind of customers they have always wanted to attract. So the website has, the biggest, has been the biggest driver of leads or the uh, biggest source of leads at the moment. Secondly, for the second case study, 
is a small business called Jay's Wines. Jay's Wines, they sell beverages. They sell things like uh, juices, soda, um, and different types of things, even uh, you know, nutritional products. They also have some nutritional products that they sell, but they target um, hotels, wine lovers, uh, bars, and those kinds of things. So let's look at what have they been able to get right. If you look at their social media, especially Instagram, they really give giveaways. They offer giveaways as a way of incentivizing and making people to, uh, to interact with them. So that has been a massive win for them in terms of building brand awareness and creating an interest in, in your product or in their product. But in terms of strategy, they have relied on the website and social media. They use them to showcase their products. So let's look at um, how their website looks like so that we can really visualize what they are doing. To be specific, they have a lot of products that they sell, but I just want to focus on their blog section. Writing blogs, writing articles, writing information that gives people um, a reason why they should buy your product is a very creative way of selling and promoting your business. I am not alcoholic, I don't take alcohol myself. And I was attracted to them when they say they also sell non-alcoholic drinks, like wines, which are not uh, alcoholic. Uh, and you can see this website has a lot of information. So they are empowering. They are not just targeting people who love wines, but they're also targeting people who don't like alcohol, uh, people who don't take um, alcoholic drinks. So you can see the richness of information on the website, the quality of the photography that they, they have. And at the bottom, you can see they are, they are now cross-selling and saying, uh, you can try our products. The other day they introduced something they called, um, you can go to their website, you can find a lot of things. For example, I think they, they, they are not giving gifts. You are looking for a gift for your friend or for your family. You can also go there. Uh, if they don't like alcohol, there are drinks that you can buy and put, the, put it as a gift. And that's very, very interesting. Another thing that I have seen they are doing, um, if I can get it very quickly, is the, the gift vouchers, yes. That's something that is very valuable that they are providing. They are now enabling people to buy using um, Safaricom bonga points. That's very interesting. So their website has a lot of information. You can also see the trust elements that are on that website. Someone can pay via M-Pesa. They can pay via Visa or MasterCard or Equitem. And that kind of a signal is what we call trust element or social proof. It makes someone to say, okay, if they are trusted by M-Pesa or they have a, a convenient way of paying, I can pay. Um, and get the product delivered. So the big idea about their website is that they offer rich, useful information. They have made their website as a rich resource. And this is a big idea I teach uh, and, and talk a lot about that don't create just a website for the sake of creating a website. A website is just a technology. You know, what matters is the information, the accuracy, the detail, the usefulness, and the context and the kind of stories you are able to tell through your website. So if you create a website and you don't put in any information, definitely customers will not find another reason to come back. So content or rich information on your website gives people, give potential users a reason to come back so that they are not just looking at your website as a place to transact, but they are looking at your website as a place they can learn, they can be informed about the products and services that you provide. So that's a very powerful uh, business model. So, and what success have they gotten or how are, are they doing it in terms of the actual strategies? As I've said, they have, uh, they have detailed information about their products. They have also optimized and ensured every product page and every article has some keyword. It is targeting at a, an issue that a customer cares about. Thirdly, they showcase different products on social media as I have demonstrated. They also provide giveaways to create engagement. So that's, if you look at them and you follow them on social media, you will see they give, um, they, they have a lot of interaction and engagement on their social media uh, to interest customers to their products. So what are their successes in terms of their winning? This year, and this is a dashboard that was shared with me uh, from them. The customers that are coming, more than 80% of their traffic 
the customers that are visiting their website, they discovered them by searching on Google. So you go and look for non-alcoholic drinks in Kenya, and then you find Jay's wines. You know, if they were relying only on social media, they will be less than 2%. If they are relying on referral from other websites, almost 0%. If they are relying on paid search where you run ads on Google, uh, not so much. But because of the richness and the usefulness of their website, in terms of the content on the product pages and the content on the articles, a lot of traffic, 80% of the traffic is coming from people finding them organically. And that's the kind of business I personally would want to run where when I'm sleeping, people are finding my website organically without me running any ads because my website is a rich source of information. That's a powerful life-changing thing. Secondly, or thirdly, our third case study is this company called um, Apple Center. So Apple Center is not even related to Apple Center, the, the Apple brand in the US. This is just a small business owner in Kenya who started as a young man who repairs phones. You know, you, are, you, have, a, you have an iPhone, uh, it falls down and the screen breaks, you take him to him. The young man is called um, a minor. He started just as a young, as a young uh, you know, mobile, repair guy, you know, that is the kind of position he had taken. But over time, he has learned to professionalize his business. And you can see he's selling iPhones, MacBooks, and of course, phone repairs. He's targeting people who love uh, Apple products. And we will look at more about them. Uh, let's look at uh, more about them. In terms of strategy for Apple Center, uh, they use Instagram and their website to showcase their products and services. And let's look at how they do it because they are not in London. They are here in Nairobi. Allow me to play the video. Um, just a second. That's Apple Center. That is their Instagram account. They also opened the other day a TikTok account. Uh, and they also have a Facebook page. You can see they have 12,000 followers on uh, Instagram. And also look at the products that they are selling. They started as a young man selling or uh, repairing broken phones. But right now he's attracting, Mr. Miner is attracting customers high net worth individuals like lawyers in the building where they are located. Uh, even I learned the other day, even Central Bank, um, they, they also get um, some of their products from uh, this supplier. A young man who started uh, just by repairing phones, but you can see the strategy around what they do. They actually leverage on showcasing the product rather than saying we sell phones, we sell phones. They will, show, they will showcase a phone being unboxed. That is the strategy that they have been using. So that's their Instagram account. You can look at it. And Instagram is the biggest driver of sales for Apple Center. This is a small business based in Kenya. It's not Apple in San Francisco. They are not even associated. They are just a reseller of Apple products. But they sell quality products and their delivery is excellent. So there are, these are inspiring stories that can uh, motivate any one of us who is in business and you are saying, oh, my Instagram doesn't work. Oh, my website doesn't get me anything. I've never gotten a customer from my website or from my Facebook. The truth is there are businesses that are doing well and these three case studies should inspire every one of us. 
So as I have said, a presenter, how do they do it? They record videos of clients unboxing new products like iPhones. They take and publish photos of products and they also record videos when a device is being repaired. I would specifically also want to show you their website because um, their website is the number two source of uh, uh, transactions or a lot of conversions come from number one, Instagram. Number two, the website you can see in terms of the website that has been built. Uh, it shows you how they do the repairs in terms of photography. It shows you uh, the products, iPhone 13, uh, Pro Max. Uh, so if you look at their website, you can also think it is Apple, the one in the, uh, in the US, but they are not affiliated. They are just a reseller. They are just a local uh, reseller. But if you go to the repairs page, uh, interesting enough, they also provide the information. So you can see the big headline here, the details and the bullets. People don't want to read a lot of details. They just want to see the big picture, so the bullets are very important there. And then here, look at it. You can fill a form and you can submit this information and it goes back to the CRM where they are now able to see, oh, this person has filled a form, let's follow them. You can also chat with them on WhatsApp. One thing I have learned from the owner of this business, Mr. Miner, he's the most passionate entrepreneur I have ever met. In terms of responding to uh, queries, in, in terms of um, the speed of responding, and I would want you to test them. So number one, Instagram, the biggest source of referrals. Number one, Instagram. Number two, the website. Number three, Google My Business. So, and this is an opportunity for someone who is saying, oh, you know what, Malimu or Francis, you are talking about websites. I don't have a, a, a budget for a website. It's a massive cost. A website is not a massive cost. It is an investment to the long-term growth of your business. Let's look at Apple Center in terms of their Google My Business. I will search for them, um, Apple Center, so that I demonstrate to you uh, their, how their uh, Google My Business. So what is Google My Business? Google My Business is a free tool. Google My Business is a free tool that Google has created. Any business owner can have um, a profile. So this is a website, of course, but I'm talking about the, uh, the Google My Business. Let me see if I'm able to get it. So if you go to their Google My Business, uh, yeah, it is actually here, uh, you can see. Before even I open their website, I can see information about what they do, the products, the location, CBD, the ratings and reviews. Mr. Miner is always fascinated or fixated on getting positive reviews from customers. And the truth is, the beauty about this tool, you don't have to pay Google to create a profile. Um, and you can see the ratings and reviews that they get because Reviews and ratings is a way of building trust with customers. You can see the time uh, they open, a lot of information about their business and other social media platforms are also linked there. So there's something we can learn from Apple Center, a small business owner uh, who is doing very well. I don't want to mention the numbers in terms of sales, but he's doing very, very well. And he's happy to scale and grow uh, the business. As I have said, the biggest lesson we can learn from them is Instagram, website, and Google My Business have been the biggest source of sales in that order. So, and before we finalize this conversation, I would like just to give us some takeaways. What are some of the takeaways we can take? And remember, I have some question. I have a question that I will be sharing with you just from this session. But the first takeaway we can uh, learn from this interaction, having a website early on, when you're starting a business, can give you a competitive advantage. Don't fear, don't shy away. Go for it early enough. These small business owners, they were very quick to adopt technology, to adopt Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. And even having a website, they were very quick early on. So that, look at it, there could be 10 companies doing similar services or selling similar products. What is the differentiation? If you have a website or you have social media uh, presence, and someone is easily able to find you and interact with you, definitely that's a competitive advantage. And I'll give you a, a case study um, 
on this just shortly. But secondly, adding social proof elements like reviews and ratings or any award you have received can build trust with customers, can increase conversions. It will persuade someone to say yes. If they are able to see, ah, okay, so this guy, um, like I, I showed the David insurance, Ken, Ken Cairo of David Insurance, he has been rewarded by AIG, he has been uh, rewarded as a very active and very um, well-performing insurance agent by Sandlam. So those awards, if you go to his office, and even when you go to the website, there's a lot of showcasing of what has he done? Who has he worked for? Because it is very hard for someone just to see the website and say, yes, you have to give them persuasion elements or social proof elements or trust elements. So if you have a testimonial, can you showcase that testimonial? If people are reviewing you and giving you reviews, can you amplify those reviews on social media? If you have any certifications, maybe it's a highly regulated industry, who has uh, authorize you to provide that service if it is a regulated industry. Do you have a certificate from the regulator? You know, are you regulated? Are you an insurance provider like David? I'm sure he has a certificate and he has it uh, in his office. And when you go online, you can be able to see that because there are a lot of quirks and people who cannot be trusted to provide similar services. So these are things that persuade someone and say, and, and make them to say yes to your offering. Thirdly, uh, a customer relationship management system can help you to track the leads that are coming. In all the businesses that I've demonstrated uh, uh, today, each of those business has a tool. It could just be something simple as a Google sheet that records how many people have we sold today? How many came from Facebook? How many came from Instagram? And how many came from Twitter? Or how many were referred? You know, even for David Insurance, the way they learned that the website is actually the biggest source of leads is because they have created a Google Sheet that tracks what you call the digital market as they have a very technical word for it. They call it uh, sales attribution. But the simple way of understanding is, it is, where are my customers coming from? And this is something you can also ask customers when you are interacting with them physically or on the phone or the email, and you input that from a simple place as Google Sheet or Excel, you may not have a sophisticated system, but you could just be having a Google Sheet that has a number of columns. The first column is the name of the customer, the product they have bought, the value of that product, and which channel did they learn about us? Where did they learn about us? Did they come from Facebook? Were they referred by a friend? So that over a week, you know, oh, to, uh, the last, the last seven days, I've been able to, to sell 50 products. Seven of them came from the website. Two of them came from referrals. That kind of tracking is very, very important for you to know what is working in terms of marketing for my business and what is not working. But so the, the, the lowest hanging fruit is Google Sheets um, or something as simple as Excel. But you can also get a tool like HubSpot, uh, which comes for free in the initial version. HubSpot has a free version. I remember there is a company called Olive Limited. They sell uh, properties. They are the best here in Nairobi, in Westlands. They sell properties in Gong uh, uh, and other places in Kenya. But one of the things that we really help them to do is just activate their website and they sure they have uh, and ensure they have a CRM. So that when someone fills a form on Facebook or they see an ad on Google, that data goes to the system. It goes to a system and the customer or salespeople or marketing people can see, oh, a lead has come and it came from Facebook. Oh, we have received 10 leads today from Instagram. Oh, we have received um, an inquiry of someone who has actually purchased a product, but they came from the website. You can never know that if you don't have a tool. So what is the purpose of a tool? A tool such as a CRM, for example, HubSpot, is for enabling you to be more efficient, to be more structured in the way you engage customers so that the leads are not falling off. Sometimes you find the biggest problem in many sales departments, in many organizations, is that people are not following customers and they are not efficient at tracking leads. I had told you, I'll give you an example of a case study of 
providing a good customer experience using a CRM. One of them is a company called Virtual HR. Virtual HR, they provide is a HR consulting firm. They are based at uh, along Gong Road. One day, the owner of the business is called uh, Gladys Ogalo. It's a friend of mine. We have worked with her. But her business has really grown nowadays. But the truth is, they started small. They are doing well. But one day, she gave me a case study of how a company from the Middle East was coming to set up a base in Africa. And they wanted to start with East Africa. And they wanted to start in Nairobi. They didn't know any company. They didn't know anybody. So they looked at HR consultants in Nairobi and they sent them RFPs or requests for proposals. And Gladys was the first person in terms of speed to respond to that customer. And this is a company that is coming. You don't know how big they are and they have no impression. They don't have an understanding of our market. So they are looking for a consultant to guide them in terms of recruitment and how to set up a base in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the market. I can tell you Gladys Ogalo, uh, through virtual HR was very fast. Customers, if you are, if they are dealing with 10 companies who are providing similar products, similar services, what is the differentiation? The differentiation could be just the speed of response. If someone will take 24 hours to respond and another person responds within five minutes, the business owner will definitely take priority to this one who is more efficient at responding. When you take 48 hours, you have not called back, you have not responded to emails. When you get missed calls as a business owner, you are not, uh, you are not calling back. So, but that customer, you assume they are just following you. There could be a hundred companies providing a similar service, a similar product in the same category and speed of response and the accuracy and the effectiveness of how you respond. Have you provided enough information that I had asked for via email or via, uh, via Google My Business or via Facebook? And I feel you are competent. You have provided the trust element. Your website has the trust element we are talking about. You have attacked evidence that you are a trusted HR consultant. So as much as people are saying the economy is not doing well, there are businesses in Kenya. And the ones I have mentioned, I've talked about David Insurance, I've talked about J's Wines, I've talked about Apple Center, I've mentioned Olive Limited, but I've also mentioned Virtual HR. These are Kenyan owned businesses. They started as a one man show thing. And each of them is growing. They are growing exponentially and they are using some form of technology. And technology does not have to be sophisticated. You don't have to get a software developer to build a system from scratch. You can start with Google Sheets. You can start with Google Docs. You can start with Excel. You can go to HubSpot and create a HubSpot account so that you can track your leads and so that your business can grow. So that when a company, uh, when a business interacts with you, they can feel, wow, I have talked to 10 companies today as I was trying to get the best supplier, but I feel these guys, they are efficient. They are very fast. They are responsive. They are also detailed in the way they respond to customers. So, but the last point is, this is something that maybe never came out, which I want to emphasize, which is my last slide, uh, Arnold and our guests and everyone who has joined us. None of those companies that I've mentioned is selling fake products, that I can guarantee you. You will not open a Facebook account and an Instagram account and start selling substandard products. You offer substandard service and expect to grow. Technology is just an enabler. There must be a foundation what is the foundation of your business? What is your competitive edge? The competitive edge should be quality products and a great customer experience. Are you able to respond fast? Are you selling, if you are selling land, is it legit land? Is there a title deed? You know, those are the things that customers look for. They are looking for something, a signal. They are looking for a social proof to say yes, because they are being switched off to 10, by 10, 15 other people. And when you are able to showcase quality products, that customer will refer others. When a customer feels they are satisfied, they are happy, because what is customer experience? Customer experience is how customers feel when they interact with your business. In terms of speed, in terms of accuracy and detail of information, in terms of evidence of showing that you are able to deliver, you have the capability, you know, those are the things that increase sales, increase conversions. 
those are the things that build trust with customers. And because we are ending, I will end this conversation uh, with two slides to talk about what we do at Digital for Africa. We provide training in digital marketing. And a lot of the case studies I have mentioned, we have interacted with all these businesses through a training or through uh, one of the services that we provide. We have a training that is coming up in April 7 and 8. You can always check our website. But we have been able to provide this training to small businesses, but also big corporations. Um, but I will end by encouraging you to visit the Digital for Africa website, digitalforafrica.com, to find more information about what we do so that you can learn more. But before I end, uh, I'm sure, Arnold, there are questions, but also there is a, I had, um, I had actually created um, one question that I want you to respond to. And if you are able to respond to that question, I will really be very happy. And it will also help you to see whether you have understood today's lesson, the big idea about today's lesson. Uh, if Arnold, you are able to share, if you are not able to share, I can also share it uh, via the chat. So you, you just go to the chat section. Uh, I think, uh, uh, you thank you, Francis. Uh, Rosalind has shared. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, so thank you, Francis, um, for that elaborate uh, presentation um, to just help the MS, uh, SME, SMEs have an insight in terms of how to use uh, digital platforms to increase their sales and also to boost um, uh, their revenues. So we will uh, go straight to the chat box, but before we do that, um, I, will, I have one question uh, to Francis. You've mentioned um, about uh, search engine being one of uh, the ways in which you can increase the visibility of your business. But I was just trying to imagine, for example, if you have uh, 20 farms selling, for example, Apple farms in Kenya, and they have all uh, created uh, websites, how do you, uh, as business X, uh, make sure that if Arnold goes on the search box and for example, such as uh, iPhone 13 um, in Kenya. How do you make sure that your website is among like the top five or the first page of that um, uh, engine, uh, engine search so that then you increase your visibility? That's a brilliant question, Arnold. Uh, are you able to see my screen, Arnold? Yes, yes. So I'll go to google.com or google.co.ke and search for a product. Let's say I'm searching for uh, laptops uh, in Nairobi or in Kenya. This is one of the most powerful tools that people don't know how to use. It is called Google Autocomplete or Google Autosuggest because it, it is based on Google's artificial intelligence system or algorithms that actually look at previous searches by people in your location and predict what people are actually interested. For example, now when I search for laptops in Nairobi, before even I finish laptops in Nairobi, you can see Google is predicting what people are actually searching in Kenya. And this is something that I really want you to know. When you are creating a website or when you are creating a Facebook page, ask yourself, the customer I'm targeting, what are they interested? What are they searching for? So it turns out people are not just looking for laptops in Kenya, but they are looking for Lenovo laptops. They are also looking for pricing. They are looking for laptops in Nairobi in the CBD. They are not looking at it in Westlands. They are not looking at it in Karen. They are looking in CBD. So what it means, you create a Facebook page and on the profile of your Facebook page or your Google My Business page, ensure you use these keywords. This is something we did as Digital for Africa and we discovered, oh, we are now getting calls because initially, at Digital for Africa, we used to have a website and we never used to go, we, we never used to get any call from someone saying, okay, I found you on the website. Until we learned these secrets, because we have done trainings with Google in Kenya, and we learned that this tool, the Google Autocomplete, is powered by artificial intelligence that looks at previous searches and now able to predict what people are interested. So don't target the whole globe. Don't target everyone in the world, target someone within your locality. 
as you have seen. People are not just looking for laptops, they're also looking for laptops refurbished. There are people who are looking for refurbished laptops. So that tells you, if you go to your website, if you go to your Facebook page, add that keyword on your profile so that people who are looking for a refurbished, uh, refurbished uh, laptop or a HP laptop, they will find your business. Let me tell you, uh, let me give you an example to answer that question. I did a similar training uh, and someone said, oh, Malimu, you are talking about big things. Me, I don't have a budget for a website. I told her, where are you based? She told me I'm based in Nakuru. What do you sell? She said, I sell pizza. So I told her, let's search pizza in Nakuru. You can see even before I present, uh, Google is already suggesting the kind of things uh, that people are searching for. So we search for pizza in Nakuru. Lo and behold, the first three companies that are appearing here are not even websites. This is a Google My Business uh, profile. This is a Google My Business profile. The, the only business, some of the businesses, and uh, lo and behold, look, this is not a website. This is a Facebook. And the only thing that they have done is to use the keyword Pizza in Akuru on their Facebook profile. That is the only thing that they have done. You can see the word Pizza in Akuru. Just that makes them to appear number one. Of course, you have to create relevant content. Look at it. Another one is a, an Instagram account. They are even above Jumia and Kenya. And the only thing they have is this keyword, pizza in Nakuru. So that's how I could respond to that. Uh, thank you, Francis. Uh, in the interest of time, we will go to the questions posted in the chat box. We have Melvin, who is a wealth management consultant. And his question is, um, I have found that FB is very poor in terms of uh, generating leads in Kenya. Uh, your comments on that, uh, especially on the unpaid uh, boosts. That's a fact. Unless you are giving people some something, you give some value, like a giveaway, and you tell people, uh, I would want you to, I'm giving, we are giving out Samsung uh, S10 for free, but on condition that you share and tag uh, you share your, you share something. Why you what? Uh, who you will give this phone? If we give you, so giveaways is a good way of creating conversations and helping people to interact, even on Instagram, but even on Facebook. Um, but the truth is, it's a fact that Insta uh, Facebook is struggling in terms of uh, generating organic leads without advertising. That's a fact because. Um, the iOS or Apple brand, they locked in the ability of Facebook to track people who use uh, iPhone uh, products in Kenya or iOS operating system in Kenya. So you can leverage on ideas like giving context, providing free trainings. You, you have to offer something free, like a training like this, we are not charging you guys, but you have given us your email and mobile numbers and we are able to communicate with you and encourage you to attend the next webinar. Ah, well put, well put. Uh, Duncan has, um, uh, Peter has a comment. Uh, his comment is, I find LinkedIn to be the best, but depending on the product. Uh, we have Duncan who has also a question. Uh, what is the approach to big companies as financial tax and management consultants? What's the, what's what? What's the approach um, uh, for big companies in terms of... Um, uh, uh, using digital platforms to, to increase their, their sales. They can use the website or social media to create content that is relevant, that is addressing the needs of their target audience. If you are providing financial services like banking or insurance, you educate people about finance and investments. You educate people about your products. You don't have necessarily to sell and say, buy this, buy this, buy this. You can come with a different approach and say, I want you to learn why it is important to invest in money market funds, for example. So those webinars that we are seeing nowadays on Instagram and Facebook and uh, Twitter uh, spaces, they are very valuable for building trust and creating awareness. And now look at it. You don't have to advertise on the traditional media, on, uh, on big platforms where maybe you don't have a budget. You can use uh, webinars, plat web uh, platforms like uh, Google Meet and Zoom to educate your audience, and it is free. You just create a Google uh, My Business, uh, a Google, uh, a Google Meet account, or uh, you can use Zoom, for example, uh, to educate your audience, and you collect some data, and then you start engaging them. 
the, the what matters is the approach. It is a strategy. It is a content that is being created. And also the targeting of the art that they are using, I'll be very keen to see, are they targeting the right audience? Are they using the right language? Is the message appealing to the audience based on their needs? Those are the things that are very important. Okay, thank you. Uh, we also have uh, a comment from Emma. Uh, she just wanted to know if the the, the slides will be shared. Uh, sure, we'll share the slides after after the session. Um, then we have uh, another question from uh, Melvin. Uh, does Digital for Africa do end-to-end -end website management and CRM for small businesses? That's a good question. Our core business is billing websites and CRMs. That's our core business. We know we do many things like training on customer service, customer experience, and sales processes, but our biggest idea or our core business is building websites and deploying CRMs like HubSpot, Odo, and Microsoft Dynamics. Okay. Um, then we also have a comment from Emma, uh, who is just wondering if you can do a health check uh, for, for her website to establish areas that uh, she needs to improve on. Um, Definitely, Emma. Uh, if you reach out to me through KBA, I can be able to have a session with you, 15 minutes, and give you feedback about your website. There are tools that I use to analyze the speed of your website, um, the quality of the information on the website. Does the website have the relevant keywords? Is it appealing to your target audience? I can do that for free, courtesy of Kenya Bankers and Inuka SME. Okay, uh, thank you, Francis. I think in the interest of time, we will um, stop with the questions there, but we will still look at the questions I haven't addressed and maybe um, get in touch with the, the attendees who have either given comments or asked questions that we've not been able to address. Uh, and you here. know what, uh, Arnold, I can see the yes. feedback. People have responded to my question. The question was, which one of the following is not a benefit of having a website for your business? Uh, uh, everyone who actually um, went to that question, they got the right answer. So that means the class was useful to them. It was 100 out of 100. That's the <laughs> good, 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 good. Uh, that's a good response. So I think we will um, uh, end our session there. Um, it's been a good presentation from uh, Francis, just trying to help MSMEs uh, use digital platform better to, to, to increase their revenues and how they can stand out within their peers in terms of uh, sales uh, by use of technology, specifically digital platforms. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank Francis, who is um, who was our presenter today for the uh, well job done. I will also want to thank uh, Rosalind Gino, who is the lead for Inuka program uh, for KBA, and also the convener for this um, uh, uh, webinar. And then lastly, I would want to thank all the attendees who have uh, taken their time um, to attend this webinar and to interact with us and also to ask uh, questions and be able to interact with one another. So mine is to thank you all uh, for attending this webinar and um, we will share the presentation slides um, with all the attendees. We'll also be able to address those questions or comments that we've not been able to address in the course of this session. So thank you all and have a wonderful morning.